We've had the full specs and pricing details for all three models of the Samsung Galaxy S20 and I'll be sharing it all right after this. If you're new here and want to stay up to date with the latest tech, please hit subscribe followed by the bell. So as we approach the launch of the Samsung Galaxy S20 on the 11th of next month, more and more details are coming forward. We now have a full spec sheet along with pricing, so today we're going to be covering it all. Of course, as well as specs, we've also had renders of all three models of the Galaxy S20 and even a hands-on video of the Galaxy S20+. Plus. So not only do we know the specs, but we also have the full designs. Before we get into specs, however, one thing that needs to be cleared up is the 120Hz display on the Galaxy S20. All three models of the Samsung Galaxy S20 are going to have a 120Hz Quad HD Plus display. As we've been told by various leakers, the user is going to have the choice of Quad HD Plus resolution or a 120Hz refresh rate, but they cannot choose both. If 120Hz is selected, the resolution will be Full HD+. Now many are already complaining and saying that this is false information, considering the OnePlus 8 is rumoured to be offering a 120Hz Quad HD Plus display, and this is also supplied by Samsung Displays. Now, according to Ice Universe, the hardware in the Galaxy S20 is capable of Quad HD Plus at 120Hz, and it's actually a software restriction put in place by Samsung. This is no doubt to save battery life, but it's disappointing that Samsung won't let users decide for themselves, especially when the competition is letting users decide and even adding a 90Hz option as well. Now, of course, because this is a software restriction, it means that Samsung could change their minds. It also means there's a possibility of this being being unlocked via third-party development. Now, when it comes to the Galaxy S20 range, all three models are incredible. We've already had a hands-on video of the Galaxy S20 Plus and plenty of renders for all three models. We now have a full spec sheet along with leaked pricing, so I'll run through each device to help you guys decide which one is right for you. When it comes to comparing the models, the main difference is phone and display size, cameras and battery capacity. We'll start with the more premium model and work our way down. The largest model is of course the Samsung Galaxy S20 Ultra and it's going to feature a full screen 6.9 inch curved display. We've got the punch hole camera top center and we're getting a dynamic AMOLED display with a Quad HD Plus resolution of 3200 by 1400. This gives us an aspect ratio of 20 by 9 and 511 pixels per inch. Although the display is curved on both edges of the Galaxy S20 Ultra, it's actually got less curvature than the previous model due to the 2.5D glass. The phone of course will have an in-display fingerprint scanner and it's going to be using Qualcomm's new faster and more secure scanner. The selfie camera is going to be a 40 megapixel wide angle and it's going to be capable of 4K video at 60 frames a second. The rear is slightly different to what we originally expected and not the same as the renders show. We originally expected 5 cameras along with 2 sensors but we now believe that we're only getting 4. As we covered in previous videos, the new periscope lens is going to be underneath the rest of the cameras in a grey housing. For the Samsung Galaxy S20 Ultra, we get a 108 megapixel main sensor, a 48 megapixel telephoto, a 12 megapixel ultra wide, and finally a 3D time of flight depth sensor. The Galaxy S20 Ultra has 10 times optical zoom, 100 times hybrid zoom, and it can record 8K videos at 30 frames a second. The phone will of course be powered by the Snapdragon 865 in North America and the Exynos 990 globally. We get a choice of 12 or a huge 16 gigs of RAM with 128, 256 or 512 storage. This is of course UFS3 storage and we also get support for expandable storage up to 1 terabyte with a micro SD card. The overall dimensions of the Samsung Galaxy S20 Ultra come in at 166.9 by 76 by 8.8 mm but if we also include the thickness of the camera bump then it's 10.2 millimeters. We of course have a USB type C port on the bottom with the speaker grill on the right. On the left we've got a small hole for the primary microphone and there's also a secondary mic on top. On the right side we've got the volume and power buttons and sad news for many is no 3.5mm headphone jack but this was of course to be expected after the removal from the Note. The phone's going to ship with Android 10 in the form of One UI 2.1 and it will be IP68 water resistant. 
battery capacity is expected to be a huge 5,000 milliamp hours. When it comes to fast charging, it's going to be 45 watt fast charge capable of wireless and reverse wireless charging. Both of the smaller models of the Galaxy S20 are going to be available in 4G and 5G variants, but the Galaxy S20 Ultra is only going to have a 5G model. And of course, it's 5G, but it will still work on 4G LTE networks. The new pricing leak has advised that the Galaxy S20 Ultra 5G is going to be a huge €1,300. Now, prices are not directly comparable between markets, so €1,300 is about £1,100, which means in the USA will probably see the phone at $1,100 to $1,200. Next up, we've got the Galaxy S20 Plus. We can see from the renders it's a full screen display with a punch hole camera top center. The display is going to measure in at 6.7 inches and we get a 120Hz dynamic AMOLED display at a resolution of 3200 by 1440 This gives us a 20 by 9 aspect ratio and a slightly higher 525 pixels per inch. Again, the user can choose between a high resolution or high refresh rate, but they can't have both simultaneously. The selfie camera is going to be a 10 megapixel but still capable of 4K videos at 60 frames a second. The bezels on the top and the bottom are slimmer than the predecessor but the size look to remain the same and again we've got the volume and power buttons on the right hand side and they're of course physical buttons. On the rear we've got the new rectangular shaped camera housing that we've been seeing a lot of recently and the Galaxy S20 Plus is going to have four cameras on the rear. Unfortunately we won't be getting the 108 megapixel camera on the Galaxy S20 Plus and it's instead going to use a 12 megapixel primary camera. We do however get a 64 megapixel telephoto, a 12 megapixel ultra wide and finally a 3D time of flight depth camera. The Galaxy S20 Plus is going to have three times optical zoom, 30 times hybrid zoom and again it can shoot 8k videos at 30 frames a second. Of course the phone's going to be powered by USB type C and there's not going to be a 3.5mm audio jack. The device will be powered by the Snapdragon 865 in North America and the Exynos 990 globally and battery capacity is going to be 4500mAh. The Galaxy S20 Plus is going to ship with Android 10 in the form of One UI 2.1 and again it's going to be IP68 water resistant. The Galaxy S20 Plus pricing is leaked at €1,050 to €1,100, so this converts to £900, so we can expect the Galaxy S20 Plus to launch around $900 to $1,000 in the USA. Finally, we've got the smallest variant, the Galaxy S20. Although it is the smallest model, it is however larger than its predecessor coming with a 6.2 inch display. The display is a 120Hz dynamic AMOLED display with a resolution of 3200 by 1440 giving us 20 by 9 aspect ratio and the highest PPI of the range at 563 pixels per inch. The selfie camera on the Galaxy S20 is again a 10 megapixel camera capable of 4K videos at 60 frames a second. On the rear of the Galaxy S20, we've got a triple camera setup. It's actually the same cameras as the Galaxy S20 Plus, but it doesn't have the 3D time of flight depth camera. The Galaxy S20 can also shoot videos at 4K at 30 frames a second. We'll likely see smaller RAM and storage configurations, but it's no doubt going to be an incredible device. We've got a battery capacity of 4000 mAh, and it will of course be using the same system on chips as the other two models. Pricing for the Samsung Galaxy S20 has been leaked at 900 to 1000 euros. This converts roughly to 800 pounds, so in the USA we can expect 800 to 900 dollars. We now know that the Samsung Galaxy S20 launch is going to be on the 11th of February 2020, and this is going to be in San Francisco, but we still haven't had confirmation if all three models will be released together or if we may see the Ultra model later on. Now, of course, the pricing is pretty much what I expected, but one thing we have to remember is that while the bulk of this information is probably true, it's still based on leaked reports and rumors. For those trying to decide on which model to buy, this can be helpful, but don't worry too much until we have the official launch where we get the full confirmation from Samsung. Of course, as any more news arises, I'll be sharing with you guys straight away, but as always, I'd like to know your thoughts in the comments.
Who out there is waiting on the Samsung Galaxy S20? Which model of the Galaxy S20 are you waiting for? And what do you think of this pricing? But thanks for watching the video. If you liked it, smash a thumbs up. If you didn't, hit the thumbs down twice. And I'll see you guys in the next one.